So to the Baroness Waldstatens I went. That night changed my life. I entered the library to take first a little refreshment. My generous hostess always put out the most delicious confections in that room whenever she knew I was coming. Sorbetti, caramelli, and most especially a miraculous crema al mascarpone, which is simply cream cheese mixed with granulated sugar and suffused with rum, which is totally irresistible. I just sat down in a high-backed chair to consume this paradisal dish, unobservable as it happened to anyone who might come in. it had become difficult to do so. I'm going to bite you in half with my fangs, wangs, my little stancil, bouncil, bouncil. <laughs> you're trembling. I think you're frightened, of course, Wilkes. I think you're scared to death. I think you're going to shit yourself. <laughs> in a moment, it's going to be on the floor. Someone hear you. Oh, nasty and smelly on the floor. Here he comes. I can hear he coming. Don't be that stupid. Oh, what a melancholy note. Something's <laughs> dropping from your boat. Oh. Now that's stupid. That's really stupid. <laughs> hey, hey, what? Trazom. What? T-R-A-Z-O-M. What's that? How should I know? It's Mozart spelt backwards. Shit with R. Ah. If you made me, you'd be Constanza Trazom. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> yes, you would. Because I'd want everything backwards once I was married. I wouldn't lick my wife's ass instead of her face. Oh, you're not going to lick anything at this rate. Your father's never going to give his consent. Who cares about his consent? You do. You care very much. You wouldn't do it without. Wouldn't no, I? you wouldn't, because you're too scared of him. I know what he says about me. If you marry that dreadful girl, you're going to end up lying on straw with beggars for children. Marry me. Don't be stupid. Marry me. Are you serious? Yes. Answer this minute. Yes or no? Say yes, and I can go home, climb to bed, shit over the mattress and jump. I did it! Ah! Her ladyship is ready to commence. Oh, yes, good. Ah. Come, my dear, the music waits. Oh, by all means, Herr Trotzol. And then right away the concert began. I heard it through the door, some serenade, only vaguely at first, too horrified to attend. But presently the sound insisted. A solemn adagio in E-flat. It started simply enough. Just a pulse in the lowest register. Bassoons and basset horns like a rusty squeeze box. It would have been comic except for the slowness which gave it instead a sort of serenity. And then suddenly, high above it, sounded a single note on an oboe. It hung there, unwavering, piercing me through, till breath could hold it no longer, and a clarinet withdrew it out of me and softened it and sweetened it to a phrase of such delight it had me trembling. The light flickered in the room. My eyes clouded. The squeeze box groaned louder and over it the higher instruments wailed and warbled, throwing lines of sound around me. Long lines of pain around and through me. Ah, the pain. Pain as I had never known it. I called up to my sharp old god. What is this? What? But the squeeze box went on and on, and the pain cut deeper into my shaking head until suddenly I was running. 
dashing through the side door, stumbling down into the street, into the cold night, gasping for life. What? What is this? Tell me, signore. What is this pain? What is this need in the sound? Forever unfulfillable, and yet fulfilling him who hears it utterly. Is it your need? Can it be yours? Dimly the music sounded from the salon above. Dimly the stars shone on the empty street. I was suddenly frightened. It seemed to me that I had heard a voice of God and that it issued from a creature whose voice I had also heard, and it was the voice of an obscene child. I ran home, buried my fear in work. More pupils still were 30 and 40, more committees toiling long hours to help musicians, more motets and anthems to God's glory. And at night I prayed for just one thing. Let your voice enter me. Let me be your conduct. Let me.